All right, we got a 2002 i35 uh, slash Nissan. It's an Infinity slash Nissan. Uh, has an obvious misfire. I'm sure you can hear it. I already went through my basic preliminary diagnosis, and I already know which cylinder is misfiring. But if you have a all tail, I'm going to show you what you can do, and we partly may look at scan data to determine the misfire. Um, let me just go to a previous lookup. I, mean, I really should just knock this out. Get this car done with. So I'm going to go here. So it says G20, but it's an I35 on the back of this car. But I don't see any difference. All right, so <clears throat> um, let's go check the engine codes. Now, I did pull a lot of coils off, so it's a possibility there may be multiple misfires, but I do know which one's missing. Come on here, boy. Yeah, I'll tell can be a little slow. As we wait on the all, here we go. All right, so let's see what code's coming up. Like I said, I pulled a bunch of coils off and I was finding it. Ah, uh, it just says multiple misfire. Sucker. Um, but you know what? Let's go back and, you know, no, 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 no. I don't want to look at it because it might lead me in the wrong direction. Only because, like I said, I disconnect a lot of coils. All right. Okay, so I got the main signals. I want to go to, well, let me see input signals. Let's go to AC input signals. I just need the O2 sensors pulled up. So here is heated O2 sensor one, heated O2 sensor sensor two. Um, I need both banks, so I'm gonna go to heated O2 sensor um, bank one right here. Heated O2 sensor two. Um, where is it? Heated O2 sensor one bank one B2. We need to go to heated O2 sensor bank two right there. All right, so I got bank one and bank two pulled up. Each is uh, the bank one sensors. What I'm going to do is merge these graphs and uh, look for the misfire, where what bank it is. Now, when the misfire is occurring with a defective fuel injector, um, what's gonna happen, if the fuel injector was defective, it would show ideal conditions you don't have any rich condition because you don't have a large amount of fuel coming to it. Now, heated O2 on bank two, this is gonna be the green here, seems to be pretty ideal here. Let me see if I can enhance this. The only sensor that seems to be, the only bank that seems to be abnormally high uh, seems to be the green. Uh, which is going to be the bank one, but that's really not going to tell me anything um, because it does oscillate. But it's just I'm just looking at these numbers here, and uh, the bank one just seems to be higher, fluctuating from like uh, seems to be lingering more so around 300 millivolts and up to eight, and back to three. It's not going down as frequent as 90 millivolts up to uh, 800 or so. So I'm assuming, um, even though I already know which bank it is, uh, it's gonna wind up being bank one. Uh, it's gonna be our problem child. But let me show you one other thing you can do with this tool, uh, this particular Nissan. Um, I can go to active test. Uh, let me see, power balance That's where I wanna go. Um, these are the PIDs I could have. I don't want any, so I'm going to go to Escape. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, deactivate the fuel injectors for each cylinder and see if it changes idle. I'm not sure you can hear it, but I'm going to go through one here. Press OK. 
it changed idle. Two, I'm gonna do the same thing with two. It changed idle. Six, I'm gonna try that. It changed idle. Five, changed idle. Four, changed idle. And I'm gonna do three. Nothing happened. So I know now Sigma 3 is our culprit and it's not conclusive, but based off those fuel readings on bank one, the uh, numbers were rich, richer than, let me go, oh shucks, what did I do? The numbers were richer on bank one than they were on bank two. We get a good look at the auction sensor readings. So when I repair this, I'm gonna up re-upload it. Not re-upload it, but uh do 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 go to bank one, he did two sensor one, he did two sensor one bank two. What I'm gonna do is uh merge these graphs. Let's pull these pids back up and show you the difference. You see, I was at 90 milli, 9 millivolts, or 90, and it's going up. It's just staying higher. It's not even going down to 9, 90 millivolts. It's staying higher. So you're always seeing it hit that 700 millivolt peak. Now, I wouldn't say this is like ultimately conclusive, like I said a little earlier, but you know, I as I say, it's like a safe assumption. But I'm gonna um, repair this coil. I do have to pull the intake off. I'm not gonna show this process. A thousand videos on how to pull these intakes off and um, do this on a hot motor. I've done many of these, so let me get this knocked out and I'll show you updated. All right, five minutes later. Um, I will go briefly over what I took off. Uh, of course, I took the uh, purge valve off, canister. I uh, took off a connector down there for another uh, solenoid. That's yeah, that's the purge valve. Sorry, this is going to be a um, runner control solenoid. Um, pulled off in 12 millimeters, millimeters. It was a basic 10 and then 12 millimeter sockets, deep well sockets I use. Anyway, got it out, got the coil out, got the spark plug out. Uh, Here's my new coil. Want to get that installed, and uh, we'll check the pit shortly. All right. Uh, ten minutes later, got everything back together. Very simple. As I said, I've done many of these. Runs a lot better. Let's go take a look at those oxygen sensor pits. Go to ECU inputs. ECM inputs. <clears throat> Um, we'll go back to these two. Merge the graph. I'm just going to show those two. So, what's different? Um, it's oscillating a lot better right now. But I will say uh, it hasn't fully warmed up, and I'm pretty sure it has not completely burned all that fuel off. But um, it's definitely moving, it's fluctuating versus staying I don't want to say I'm gonna say stagnant uh, but it definitely has a smoother transition than what it did before there you go look at there it went to 90 millivolts before it didn't even go to 90 millivolts it probably went like at 11 12 now look at look how low it's going so the computer's able to compensate um, let's go through the same test with uh, deactivating this fuel injector it was an active test here power balance tests I don't need those and we're gonna go to uh, let you sit here and watch all right, let's see. all right I'm gonna do two since obviously two before would change idle click OK I had uh, change idle let's go to three now and see if it changed idle it changed idle and it cleared up. So yeah, this is fixed. I'm gonna rev it up. 
it just was running so much more smoother. No more hesitation, misfire down low. Everything's working fine. Um, like I said, everybody done these videos, so ain't no purpose of doing a, a thorough uh, removal and replacement video. It's a shit ton of these out there. Uh, I did change the spark plug too while I had it out. Spark plug really doesn't focus. focus. This is gonna get in better lighting. Is that better lighting? Good. Yeah, that should be better. I don't know how close it's gonna focus, but the spark plug didn't didn't look too bad. I mean, I smelled it and it didn't smell like any. Didn't have too much of a burnt smell or anything. It looks. I would say it burned fairly normal for the, for the fact that there was a little oil residue on there. You can see some oil tracking. There it go, focus. So yeah, anytime you see that white soot looking thing like it's caked up on there, that's oil. Um, it's obvious also you can look inside the intake and see there was uh, oil tracking inside of it. Probably because of the high mileage, a lot of blow by. But anyway, I ain't gonna sit there and ramble. Uh, the car's fixed. Um, labor time on this would have been 1.6 hours. If you was to actually fully remove this intake and take everything off by the book, but I ain't doing it. Uh, this was 10 minutes off, 10 minutes to put it back on, and you know, I've done this. Alright, peace.